Coming soon to a court near you, criminal penalties may go on sale. That may sound crazy, but that is probably a fair representation of the state's plan to limit criminal penalties, sentencing, and parole and supervision. Janice, what say you? I think the idea of going from focusing on just in general increasing the population in prisons to hey let's focus on the actual serious offenders is a good idea. I think to me it makes more sense to focus on what we can do to help improve mental health and also what can we do to rehabilitate, rehabilitate the people back into society. So okay. it's figuring out what do we, how can we actually help them and make a difference instead of the same thing happening over and over again. Jim, you have an opinion on? I do. <clears throat> I think it's very good. And I, I, there's a risk here. There's obviously a risk. But I think there's a larger risk by continuing to throw people in prisons that 20 years ago would have never come anywhere near a prison. You know, I remember, and I, I, I am a firm believer in, in, in not driving under the influence. I'm a firm believer in, um, in getting drug dealers off the streets. Um, but I think drug addicts need to be treated as addicts and as a sickness, not as a, not as a criminal. And I believe that there is a stigma associated with being imprisoned that will forever change somebody's life. Exactly. And I think that we have, as a society, in my opinion, um, over-criminalized certain activities. We've made things that used to be minor crimes felonies. We've put in mandatory minimums. We've done all of these things trying to, trying to reduce crime. And maybe it does at some level, but it also, it also creates havoc for those who are good people that maybe just ran into a bad situation. I can tell you personally, one, you know, the words that I never want to hear in my life is, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used you, against you in a court of law. Exactly. And if it, if it ever was used, I think that would forever change my life. Exactly. Go ahead, Janice. Well, I recently watched a TV show that was actually digging in deeper to what's going on in the prisons and you know, kind of what's the story behind the scenes. And like Paul Harvey used to say, here's the rest of the story. And one of the things that really concerned me was the fact that a lot of the prisons are privately owned now. And it's so basically there's this thing of saying, okay, well, I have a thousand cells in this prison that need to be filled mm -hmm. in order for me to make money and for me to make a profit at this. So it's, to me, it's capitalism, and it's at its worst. So, so we put a quota system on putting people in prison. Yes, right. because okay. it's much more. To me, it seems like we've gone into this focus of we need to put people in prison, and we need to have these cells filled, and it's about having more and more people in there in order to, for these people to make money, instead of okay, if you do the crime, you need to do the time, you get appropriate punishment for what you did. Because, you know, we also need to teach society that there is a consequence for your actions. Absolutely. But it needs to match what it was. And it's really, how can we help and how can we fix the situation, solve the problem, rather than just creating something that gets worse and worse and so worse. So you think that the punishment should be a subjective decision by the judge, whether it's community service, uh, a stint in rehab, or you know, maybe you're, you're going to be on parole before judgment, some, something along those, those lines, or probation. I think there judgment. needs to be, I, I think having a discussion and having, you know, possibly a subjective reasoning between the defendant's attorney, the prosecuting attorney, and the judge definitely makes sense because you know, this person, it may be their first offense, and whether they go do jail time or they get community service makes a difference in the rest of their life because they're going to have a record and that's going to impact their employment history. It's going to impact their ability to and do things. And the jail time, I would argue, has significant impact. Because then they're going into a space where it's like there's known prison gangs, there's like this is a bad influence that okay, maybe they made a mistake or they messed up, but it's just got 
exponentially worse. You know, I grew up in a in a in a different time in terms of in terms of alcohol. And I grew up in a time when um, if a cop, uh, if a policeman saw you and thought you were under the influence, their first inclination was not to immediately throw you in jail. Their first inclination was to get you out of the situation and home safely, however that happened, and <clears throat> tell you don't do it again. And I got to tell you, um, you know, and I wasn't a big drinker in, in my college years, but but for the grace of God, you know, I, I, I could have, and I, I can't imagine how that would have changed my life. And I've never had an interaction with the, with the justice system at that level, and I hope never to. I do watch Law & Order marathons. Gives <laughs> um, you a little time. exposure. But, um, but it, I, I mean, seriously, I, I think it would have had a serious impact on my life. You know, I was, I, I was fortunate in the jobs that I got when I was young. Um, out of high school, out of college, and I don't think I would have been escalated in my job as quickly as I was had I had that criminal record. But, you know, we, we can harken back to back in the 1980s when I think there really was a large push on mandatory sentencing. If you were involved in a crime, MAD became a very, it became a national organization back in the 1980s. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not bashing MAD. Absolutely. Okay, they, they've done a fantastic job in preventing drunk driving. And they, they really are taking some issues and have addressed those. What I'm he headed towards is the mandatory sentences, not just for drunk driving, but even for other crimes that are committed. Sometimes it may be better to have the judge not be locked in to, oh, this is going to be a five-year sentence or this is going to be a one-year sentence, not allow the judge the latitude to decide what is the appropriate punishment. Now, that can be subjective based upon the, the criminal history of the, of the person. That can be subjective upon, you know, we had the, the fellow down in Texas, the young boy who he was guilty because of his parents were too wealthy. Um, I, I think that's kind of a foolish defense, but I think giving the latitude, addressing, eliminating some mandatory sentences is a good positive benefit for us. And it's going to save, to the point that Maryland's trying to make, is it's going to save significant money. I mean, they've, they've watered down the bill, but they're still talking about millions of dollars in savings. So that's not a bad thing either. Uh, Jim, I think on that, that's, that'll be the last word. Up next, testing in Maryland schools. Will less tests produce better results? We'll report you can decide.